What's up folks? Welcome back to the channel. Boozer here. Thanks for stopping by. A little bit late on this video, but we're going to jump into the hero's path and explain uh, everything about it, whether it's worth going for, what we need to do to get it, how to do it most efficiently, and so forth. So without further ado, we're going to jump into that. Um, just doing the dragon tournament, as you can clearly see right now, we got a pretty good team for it. Just a quick little side sidetrack here. Um, if you guys don't have um, a proper team for this event, uh, if you guys want to try to do it, Lissandra and Staltis are very good. They have these debuff transfer uh, abilities, and then, you know, obviously you can transfer back the dragon, uh, the, the poison and all that stuff. So it makes a pretty quick work of the dragon here. But anyways, we're going to jump into the Hero's Path right now. All right, guys, so Hero's Path, there's nothing really going on today uh, for this weekend, actually, which is kind of surprising. Um, the interesting thing is that on the uh, upcoming events calendar, we can kind of see there's not really too much going on, uh, at least for today and tomorrow. Uh, we do have a, a special spiders tournament coming on probably after the dragon tournament, which makes sense. The dragon tournament's like almost two days expiry. Um, and then this spider tournament will be special condition, similar to how this dragon tournament is as well. Um, keep in mind guys that the 21st is what was stated on the uh, Asgard divide uh, campaign. That's when it's all gonna be starting. So, uh, yeah, keep that in mind, uh, something in the back of your head that on the 21st is when probably uh, we'll start seeing some Asgard um, events start popping up. But for the meantime, we actually don't really have much. We just have the spider going on and then we have the hero's, uh, the hero's path that overlaps both the dragon and the spider. Um, but yeah, not too much going on there. So heading back to the uh, hero's path. So hero's path here. Got two three day event here. It's Hero's Path. It's going to be a five star reward for the uh, Skull Rig um, fusion that we just did. Now, five stars for this champion is very good. He's super stat hungry. He requires damage stats, accuracy. Um, so, giving him the five star boost there gives him obviously um, 75 accuracy, which makes building him up for damage a lot easier. Also, five star blessing for something like uh, Nature's Wrath on him would be a good uh, shout for uh, Hydra. It'll boost his damage up quite a lot. So, this is definitely going to be worth it if you decide to heavily use this champion. That's going to be the big question here whether you're going to be heavily using this champion or not. Um, it seems kind of mixed in terms of overall reception uh, to this champion. Personally, I think he's a fine champion. He places Hex relatively consistently um, and he deals decent damage not insane damage because most of his damage is coming from the uh hex application but he deals good damage um otherwise this hero's path pretty plain unfortunately scorig doesn't even get his own like name like it's not even like scorig's hero's path or scorig's path it's just hero's path which is kind of interesting super plain it feels like this weekend is kind of bare bones for Plarium. i don't know they're probably setting up for the asgard stuff who knows um or to probably just giving us limited options to to uh you know kind of force us into deciding to do this horrible event or you know less than desirable event uh or just sitting out for next couple days and i know some people can't sit out and do nothing for a couple days so maybe they're just trying to you know get us to spend resources that way but anyways i'm uh diverging a little bit but how do we get points for this event we're doing dungeon divers and we're summoning stuff so we're summoning shards or doing dungeon divers um in terms of overall point breakdown here 4500 for the sacred shard obviously going to be the most um efficient way to tackle this looks like there's a bit of a boost for promo shard usually promo shard i believe is about 1200 points so 2700 points here you know it's a bit of a boost but obviously, I would definitely not advise pulling Primal Shards for any event outside of a 2x mythical event. Not even 2x legendary event because they actually separate the two in previous events. You want 2x mythical and those are the only time I would ever pull Primal Shards unless you're like super desperate to like finish a summon rush for some reason, like to finish a fusion or something. Um, yeah, and everything else seems normal. While we're on that train of thought, make sure you guys... Pull your uh, Skorig, the half spawn fusion. Make sure you guys fuse him in the next day or so because this can really mess people up. And I'm sure somebody somewhere will get messed up by this by forgetting to fuse this champion. 
But if you guys didn't fuse him during the most recent CVC and then you guys were holding him out for maybe a potential, you know, chase event or whatever this weekend, we now know that there's no chase, no summon event. It's just a hero's path and it's going to be shards only. So feel free to pull your score egg or fuse your score egg immediately uh, so that you don't forget and uh, be very sad. So make sure you guys do that. All right, so back to the point breakdown here. Everything looks kind of normal-ish from the shard standpoint. In terms of dungeon diving, it's going to be very um, expensive, obviously. Uh, roughly, I was kind of doing, I did about 1,500 energy in Dragon just to like, kind of test it out. So far, I was getting about 70 points per 40 energy, so about 1.75 points per energy. It could be a little bit low. It could be, I don't think it's high. I think it could be a little bit low, but 1.75 points per energy on hard 10 is probably what you're going to be expecting. So let's break down the paths and how much points it is, and then we can use this math to calculate our total spend. All right, guys, so let's follow along with this giant mess of a drawing here. But basically, the green path is going to be the path that you need to take to get the soul. I don't really like that there's a single five star soul here. They could have offered maybe like the two, three, four. Uh, or even, yeah, they could have offered a 2-3-4 or a 2-3-4 split um, instead of this kind of winner-take-all kind of format. It really kind of just like uh, hinders um, participation in my in my uh, opinion. But uh, I guess it does create like, you know, a bit of FOMO where you're kind of like, oh, I need to get this or I get nothing kind of mentality. I don't know. But anyways, that's what it's going to be. It's going to be 89,800 points. You're going to come down here. You got to get the key in the middle which is really annoying because then you got to get some of these low hanging um, rewards like this rare book, for example. But anyways, you're going to pick up this uh, 1000 point key and then you're going to come back out and then you're going to go down the far left hand side down to this uh, lock, open it, get a stupid barrel, uh, six star chaos or and then you're finally going to get the 50,000 soul at the end. Obviously, most of the point total will be your 50,000 soul at the end. Um, you're not really getting too much valuable things coming down to the soul here like the six star mythical ore like yeah that's good barrel honestly is super useless um like it's it's fine but it's super useless we all know it's super useless <laughs> um but yeah so anyways it is what it is you're not really getting much along the way you're just kind of getting for the soul eighty nine thousand uh and eight hundred points that's gonna work out to uh, divide by sacred shards for example 20 sacred shards for not the champion for the soul it's absolutely ridiculous how ridiculous this is it's, this isn't isn't like you know a super premium like legendary or anything like that like he's good but man you gotta pay 20 sacred shards just for this guy's soul like honestly they need to cut back on the cost of all these uh soul events like make it like 12 15 right something reasonable like something that somebody would actually pull uh for uh like if somebody pulls 20 sacred shards in an off event you know with a minimal summoning a boost let's check out the summon boost right now there are some decent champions but honestly like it's pretty minimal right like you got uh Aetherion here like he's great geomancer is great obviously and then you want the makage fusion um but it's pretty minimal uh, and for somebody to pull 20 sacred shards like this, uh, it's kind of a stretch to be honest. Yes, you have some dungeon divers and stuff like that going on. I'm going to tell you guys that at 1.75 points per energy, the total cost of this would be absolutely insane. So let's go that back in here. Go 89, 800 divided by um, 1.75. It's going to be, you know, just shy of about 50,000 energy. If you're gonna do this straight from, uh, if you're gonna do this straight from uh, dungeon diving by itself, if let's say you do like a 50-50 split, you pull 10 sacred shards, it's still gonna cost you 25k energy. Uh, 25k energy divided by how many how many gems that's gonna be? That's 192 refills at 40 gems per refill. It's gonna cost you 7,700 gems farming dungeons if you pull 10 sacred shards it's absolutely absurd in terms of the overall spend here i think um yeah just to get this done like to me personally like i could probably think of a way or talk myself into com uh, competing in this like i have 46 sacred shards so i can definitely pull all my sacred shards to get the soul is it worth it probably not especially with the asgard events coming up on the 21st uh most likely 
Um, I have gems. I can spend the gems again. Is it worth it? Probably not, uh, considering that we probably need to save the resources again for the Asgard stuff. I don't know who would possibly go for this. Maybe somebody that really wants a Therion, or maybe somebody that really wants a Crisia. They might go pretty ham on pulling the shards. Uh, otherwise, we can explore some of the other paths and see if they're worth it. So we got a purple path here. It's going down to the big rock. To be honest, the big rock looks kind of enticing, but obviously if you're just going to pay an extra 10K, I'd rather get the guaranteed value with the score egg soul. Uh, but you are getting some better rewards, in my opinion, along the way. Um, so you're getting like the mythical book, which is really nice. You're getting the um, the coins, you know, the, the iron twins uh, resources here, which is good. Uh, so we're going to go down uh, the purple path here. So go down here, get the core hammers, uh, the purple juice, uh, get the five powder and then they get the key come back out to the far right hand side uh, pick up the coins pick up the essence pick up the glyph unlock the lock five star chicken mythical book and then big rock Seventy nine thousand points really again very expensive it's going to cost you around 18 sacred shards so if you can pull 18 sacred shards you can reward yourself with the big rock or you can pay two more sacred shards and get yourselves a guaranteed uh, five star legendary uh, soul which is you know, I think you probably go for the five star legendary soul, but some people like to gamble, I guess. So they might go for the big rock. Either way, the discrepancy is too um, is too small uh, to consider even going for the big rock. Uh, it's just too expensive. Either one. So if you, for example, have a you know you know an itch and you want to pull for some shards this weekend or whatever, uh, the probably the milestone that makes the most sense is going for the book. So I got the red lines here going down to the book. First, you have to unlock the key again. So everybody has to go down this weird route to get this key. And then they have to come back up, unlock this lock, get a medium soul stone, which is good. Uh, the medium soul stone is worth, you know, worth about 2000, 2500 energy in like, uh, sand devil tournaments, for example, you get one per month. Um, so we're getting like, you know, some more avenues to get these medi medium stones, which is pretty nice. And then we're going to get a legendary book at the end of it. Total cost 27,000 points um, for a medium stone and a book, which actually seems, you know, kind of okay. Kind of okay. So we can do the math here. 27, 8, 4,500, uh, six sacred shards. Honestly, six sacred shards. For a legendary book and a medium stone not the worst not the worst guys not the worst so if you guys are you know hankering to pull shards that might be the avenue you take to be honest i might do that considering that i have some extra energy that's going to expire so i'm just going to use it right now i'm going to see how far my dungeon diving takes me and then we'll see how many secret shards i need to pull at the end but pulling six or so just to get these nice rewards like a medium stone and a book not too bad to be honest so do consider that if you guys are going for that. I think the other two paths are way, 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 way too expensive. Um, a full skip on this entire event totally makes sense as well. Like I said, the Asgard divide events start on the 21st, most likely, based on what is you know written down. So definitely something to look out for and to save up for, considering um, that those are going to be some pretty juicy uh, events, most likely, right? Personally speaking, like I was kind of looking forward to the hero's path for Scoring's uh, soul because I think, you know, he's a good champion. I wouldn't mind having like a soul for him just to test it out on uh, some of my Hydra teams. Uh, not going to say like he's going to make it into like super end game teams or anything, but I think he's definitely very viable for a lot of people. Uh, he makes the, you know, the hex debuff a lot easier for people to bring. Sometimes you just don't have the proper hex champions um, to bring for certain teams, especially three teams. So I can see Scoring being very, very useful for a lot of people. Um, but yeah i think the soul is a little bit too restricted in terms of how expensive it is like i said i would have appreciated like a two three four and then a five at the end kind of event where people can kind of cherry pick like um you know, the smaller souls uh for example so they can come away with something personally i think the soul path is way too expensive you're not getting much value out of it you're just getting a soul 20 secret shards worth is just kind of ridiculous the rock also pretty expensive um you are getting a mythical book out of it as well but it's still pretty expensive and i don't know who would actually go for this maybe whales uh maybe whales will go for both but it's you know we're talking 38 sacred shards worth even if you slam a bunch of energy into this i don't know how much energy you can actually spend on this because i mean you know 
I, I, I don't know. Some people like maybe they're getting spent a crazy amount of energy. We have Dragon active with triple speed, and then we have Spider coming up. So maybe people can spam energy easily, but this is super expensive. Personally, the book path is actually not bad value. So, you know, in recent memory, you don't really get a chance to get a legendary book after six sacred shards very often. So I think if you have shards and you want to pull for the book, you get a medium stone along the way. I think that's pretty good value. Um, but I would highly caution saving resources if you are low on resources uh, for the Asgard device. So for myself personally, I might actually really consider it because I have lots of sacred shards. I have energy about like I'm stacked up on energy here. So I'm going to be committing a bit of energy to the dungeon divers portion of it. And uh, I think it makes sense for me to pull some sacred shards just to pick up the medium stone and the legendary book. But anyways, that's going to be it for the video and my path analysis. Uh, personally, let me know what you guys think about uh, everything here. If you guys are planning to do anything here. Otherwise, we're just going to take a couple day break. Wait for the Asgard Divide uh, events that are dropping on the 21st. The Loki Chase will happen on the 21st as well. And uh, just a quick th quick comment about the Loki Chase. Uh, I'll bring up the slide here. So here's the slide for the Loki Chase. In my initial video, I said it was only going to be a 14 day event. Um, however, it's actually going to extend beyond 14 days. There is a phase two here that I actually didn't see uh, based on the image. Well, I just didn't notice it. But based on the words that are on the deck, it didn't say anything beyond the 14 days. So I just assumed that this was probably could have been like a copy paste error because this was very similar to the Adeline chase that we just had, you know, I don't know, a couple months ago, right? And there was a phase two for the Adeline chase, which led to her five star soul. Uh, I did examine the Island Chase versus the Loki Chase uh, image, and it looks like the placement of the two star soul is the exact same on day 14. And then phase two of Adeline uh, led to the five star soul. So we can all maybe assume that Loki's phase two will lead us to his five star soul as well. Um, like I said, guys, based on the text that I see in front of me, there was no mention of anything beyond 14 days. If anything, this was only going to end after 14 days. Uh, so I assume that this phase two was just an image error that they copy pasted wrong. But Plarium did confirm that there is a phase two. They fell short of confirming that it is going to be a five star soul though. So don't be disappointed if phase two does not have Loki's five star soul. If it has Loki's five star soul, that would be amazing because Loki would love all those extra stats, especially the accuracy and resistance would be would be awesome for loki i i would assume that it would probably be his five star soul but player can throw some surprises and maybe make it like a three star soul or four star soul or something uh, a four star soul for loki is not going to make a huge difference but the five star soul would be massive for him uh but yeah just a quick little um correction here i guess at the end of this video but yeah we can look forward to a phase two of the loki chase um but yeah to wrap up the video on the path like I said, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think about all this. Otherwise, enjoy your weekend. Have a great couple days off. And I'll see you guys in the next video.